Good morning, everyone. So as we gather this day, for those of us here for the school mass, kids, next Monday we start all sorts of construction around the church. And so this mass, this farewell mass for our eighth graders and the transition for our kindergartners is a special one with lots of traditions in it, which we will be doing at the end of the mass once the live stream is finished. We're getting close to the end of the school year and a time of change for many people. And as we do so, we're excited and we ask for God's help. So now as we get ready to pray, please stand, greet those around you. And let's start our pass. by your peaceful rule, and that your church may rejoice untroubled in her devotion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Sirach. My child, 
do not mock the life of the poor. Do not keep meeting guys, needy eyes waiting. Do not grieve the hungry, nor anger the needy. Do not aggravate a heart already angry, nor delay giving to the needy. A beggar's request do not reject. Do not turn your face away from the poor. From the needy do not turn your eyes. Do not give them reason to curse you. If in their pain they cry out bitterly, their rock will hear the sound of their cry. Those who serve her, the Holy Ones, those who love her, the Lord loves. Whoever obeys me will judge nations. Whoever listens to me will dwell in my inmost chambers. If they remain faithful, they will possess me. Their descendants, too, will inherit me. I will walk with them in disguise, and at first I will test them with trials. Fear and dread I will bring upon them, and I will discipline them with my constraints. When their hearts are fully with me, then I will set them again on the straight path and reveal my secrets to them. But if they turn away from me, I will abandon them and deliver them over to robbers. Do not bring shame upon yourself. There is a shame heavy with guilt, and a shame that brings glory and respect. Show no favoritism to your own discredit. Let no one intimidate you to your own downfall. Do not refrain from speaking at the proper time, and do not hide your wisdom. For wisdom becomes known through speech, and knowledge through the tongue's response. Never speak against the truth, but of your own ignorance be ashamed. Do not be ashamed to acknowledge your sins, and do not struggle against the rushing stream. Do not abase yourself before a fool. Do not refuse to do so before rulers. Even to the death, fight for what is right, and the Lord will do battle for you. Do not be haughty in your speech, or lazy and slack in your deeds. Do not be like a lion at home, or sly and suspicious with your servants. Do not let your hand be open to receive, but clench when it is time to give. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew, and renew the, face the face of the earth. I praise you, Lord God, with all my heart. You are glorious and majestic. Our Lord, you made so many things. The whole earth is covered with your living creatures. Lord, Lord send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. You created all of them by your spirit, and you give new life to the earth. Our Lord, we pray that your glory will last forever and that you will be pleased with what you have done. Lord, Lord send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, always be glad because of the Lord. I will say it again, be glad. Always be gentle with others. The Lord will soon be here. Don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. With thankful hearts, offer up your prayers and requests to God. Then because you belong to Christ Jesus, God will bless you with peace that no one can completely understand. And this peace will control the way you think and feel. Finally, my friends, keep your minds on whatever is true, pure, and right. Holy, friendly, and proper. Don't ever stop thinking about what is truly worthwhile and worthy of praise. You know the teachings I gave you, and you know what you have heard me say and saw me do. So follow my example, and God, who gives peace, will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leapt in her womb. And Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Most blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. How does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears. The infant in my womb leapt for joy. Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary remained with her about three months and then she returned to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now to all of you, uh, you know, we've had a, a bunch of different readings today, chosen by some of the students, this reading from the visitation of Mary. So my homily is not the one that I've done for the podcast. This is for really for you graduates, you kindergartners, and for all of us to keep in mind what happens in life transitions when things change. Going to a new school, maybe even a new part of the country. Moving from your kindergarten grade to first grade. Kids who graduated who are going on to college or vocational school or the military or work. And I think about it like a book. Love books, love reading books, and I love good stories. And you know how like when you're in a book and it's really good and you're at this really good spot in the book, like say right about here, and you get right to the end of the chapter and it leaves you hanging. Like, what's gonna happen? What could that be? <laughs> and then usually, then that's about the time that my mom said, okay, close the book, go to bed. This is the best part. What's gonna happen next? She says, wait till tomorrow. Bye. And as soon as I get a chance, okay, start again. And there are times when there are chapters in a book they're really maybe scary, they might be exciting, they might make you nervous, they might make you wonder what's gonna happen. But when you close a chapter, it's like one part of the story is done, we move to a, a new part. Something new is going to happen. New characters, new locations, new opportunities, new adventures. And you're at a point in life right now, about this time of the year, where we turn the page on a new chapter. For you eighth graders, you're gonna turn the page and go into high school. All sorts of opportunities, possibilities, adventures will happen. Kindergartners, you're making a change to move up now formally into the elementary school as first graders. You had your first year in our school all day long like this. Now you move on. For all of us, you students, you move a grade, and there are different times in life where people, their chapter is really exciting, something completely and extraordinary and new. That's part of life. Now, one of the things that we gotta remember is each chapter is important. 
But the new chapters have adventures as well. Sometimes people can be nervous about that. Sometimes they might wonder, get anxious. The kids, one of the reasons why we pray is this. God walks with us. No matter where we are in the story of our lives, Jesus walks with us. Whenever you are struggling, you can pray. Whenever you're wondering what's going to happen next, you can pray. And if there's something great, you can thank God. And if there's something that's got you worried, you can ask God for help. Because Jesus walks with us through the whole story. That's one of the reasons why we pray, why we pray here in church, why we pray every day. That no matter where we are in the story of our life, Jesus will be with us. For you who are graduating, may you continue to pray every day that God will help you, bless you, lead you, guide you, and strengthen you for the next chapter. It'll be great. It'll be new. It will be exciting. And God will be with you. May the Lord bless you on the next chapter and walk with you always. God bless you all. For those who are going to be offering the prayers of the faithful, come on up. We pause now to offer our prayers this day for our needs and the needs of the church. serve others in all that we do and work together to love others as Christ loved us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all those who are sick, suffering, or in any kind of danger, that they would experience the healing power of Christ's love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for all the blessings in our lives, especially our families, friends, and the school community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own needs and intentions that we now recall in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intention of this Mass, Dolly Cosgrove, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and loving God, look kindly upon us. Watch over the eighth graders as they transition on to high school and hear the prayers that are spoken and silent, for we make them all in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we earnestly ask you to bless our diocese with many priests, brothers, sisters, and deacons who will love you with their whole mind gladly spend their entire lives serving your church and making you known and loved. Bless our families, bless our children, and choose from our homes those needed for your work. Mary, Queen of the Clergy, pray for us. Pray for our priests, religious and deacons. Obtain for us many more. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Thank you, choir. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. God, who provide gifts to be offered to your name and count our oblations as signs of our desire to serve you with devotion, we ask of your mercy that what you grant as the source of merit may also help us to attain merit's reward through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify your name on the solemnity of the visitation of the blessed ever-Virgin Mary. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal light Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty. Dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, 
giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with our Pope Francis, James, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. every chapter in our life, new things happen. Sometimes we know the path, sometimes we might not. And obviously, for the changes that you eighth graders will find as you transition to high school, one of the best prayers you can say every day is the prayer that Jesus taught us. And so with one voice, one heart, we pray it together for you now as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress and useless worry as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, for the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Nourished by your saving gifts, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that on this feast of the visitation of the Blessed Virgin Mary, by this same blessed sacrament that we have received in you, you will feed us in this present age and make us partakers of life eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A couple of announcements. Please be seated. So as we bring our school year to a close next week, kids, you want to be watching because on Friday we will have a special groundbreaking ceremony at 10 o'clock out on the front steps of the cathedral to bless the construction workers for their safety, for the success of the new project all around the cathedral, and for all of those who supported it, and that everyone who is blessed in the project will be done on time. Now with all that in, in mind, you will see all sorts of heavy equipment around here next week. So parents, family, friends, those who are tied in, please use great care when traveling anywhere around this side of the cathedral. It will all be closed down as we get ready for the construction work that starts next Monday. So again, big heavy equipment, lots of machinery. The parking lot and the entire space will be off limit on this side. Traffic will be fine. So just enjoy that these last few days of the school year. We will be having our specific ceremony for graduation at the conclusion of the final hymn, and at that time we'll also end the live stream mass. Please stand. Before the final blessing, a special thanks to Father Jim Tobalski, pastor at St. Francis, Father Anthony, the associate here at the cathedral and our cluster of churches. Uh, they've been saying and celebrating masses with you kids along with me all, all year long. And it's a pleasure to welcome them here as we pray together for this farewell. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.